recording that probably, but now I'm recording. All right. So what about something like this? What are the ways, a couple ways we could look at this? Uh, we, we could we could think about this as, as writing it using an equivalent exponential state. And let's go back and quickly just review what that means in general. Like if I have something like, I don't know if I ever wrote this down. If I have something like a base A log of X equals Y, what I want to know is what's the equivalent exponential state? I don't know if we ever wrote this down. This is probably important to be able to do. Good. A to the Y equals X. And how do you remember that? A log is an exponent. So whatever the log is equal to becomes the exponent. The base is the base. The base is either going to be the base of the log or the base of the exponential statement, right? So we would write this as A to the Y equals X. Good. And it seems like you guys have pretty good handle on that. So then what could, how could I apply that here? Well, I could just, how about if we just set this equal to X or something, right? Some unknown. We, we're trying to find out what it's equal to, so that will be the unknown X. So if we write the base A log of 512 equals X, then what would that look like as an exponential statement? And that's helpful, right? Because then we could just say, well, what's that going to be? And we could, you know, think about that a little bit. It's got to be 5 cubed, right? So it's, um, so we know X is 3. That's one way to do it, okay? There's, how, it, what if, what if we were, Okay, how else, we got to there, and that might be enough to say x equals 3, but before I leave that, what else could we do with that 8 to the x to make it even simpler? <coughs> like, eight, 8 is a base that we, we, when we see the base 8, we're thinking, okay, I can, I can make write that in terms of an even smaller, simpler base. 2 cubed. 2 cubed, right? Eight is a perfect cube. So whenever you see a number that's a perfect cube or a perfect square or a perfect fourth or something like that, then you can you can write that in terms of a smaller base. Whenever you, you get my point there, whenever I see something like like eight equals two cubed, or if we had like uh, sixteen equals two to the fourth, make that substitution because look, then the base you're working with becomes smaller, right? So we can rewrite this as two cubed to the x equals 512. Now, raise your hands here. I want to get somebody to volunteer for me. How, what is that? Remind me what that, remind me what that property of exponents is. Mr. Volunteer, if I take a power to a power, what do I do? Do I add them or do I multiply them? You multiply them, right? Because that's what we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. Right? So we're going to write that as 2 to the 3x equals 512. Now, that's easier, right? Because now, if we want to think about the powers of 2, those are easier to find. Right, so that might that might be an easier way to think about. Okay, two to what power is five twelve, and then set that power equal to three x. If you're going to use that method, right? Okay, but there is actually an easier way to do this. That's one way to do it. But I want to focus on the other the trick here that we can use. If I have a uh, a base of a logarithm that's a weird base, how do I convert that to a more convenient base? So in other words, fill in the blanks for me. This goes to you know, kind of a pre-algebra concept. If I have the base A log of B, write that in terms of, for example, natural logs, which is what we prefer to do. Remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a big one. It's the natural log of the argument divided by the natural log of the base. Or I could do a base 10 log if I wanted to. Right? You can pick whatever base you want. You can always write a logarithm, a base A logarithm, as a quotient of logarithms in whatever base you choose, which would for us would almost always be natural log. Right? Now that makes this a little bit easier, doesn't it? So this is just equal to the natural log of 512 divided by the natural log of 8. And now we can apply our properties of logarithms. Right? We could say something like, for example, we could see that this top one, 512 is a perfect cube. That's 8 cubed. And so we could write that as the natural log of 8 cubed divided by the natural log of 8 and by our properties of logs. What are we going to get there? Natural log of 8 cubed is what? What's that going to be? Evan, what's our property of logs if we have a log of, of something to an exponent? What do I do with the exponent? 
Let's here. Let's go. If I go, let's go back. Oops, not there. Let's remind ourselves real quick before we jump into anything else. This is right down our properties a lot. Right. We have the. And I'll just use natural log. We could use any log we want to, but we'll use natural log. The natural log of a times b is what? Good. Good. So the log of a product equals the sum of the logs. Right. The natural log of a divided by b is. And the natural log. Let's add natural log. Of a to the n would equal. And there you go. Right. So that that's what we need here, isn't it? Right. I've got the natural log of a to the n, right? So that's going to equal 3 log a over log a. Look, those cancel. I just did 3. Okay, so that's this one right here. I started that one. That's a really important one. It makes life a lot easier. To get the logs. Okay, here's another one. What questions on that one? Okay, right. How about this one then? So rather than rewriting this as an exponential, which we could do, let's just use that property. So what's that going to become if I've got a base 2 log of 1 8? Chelsea, what can I write that as? Let's write it as a quotient of natural logs. That helps, doesn't it? Because now we can focus on the top. How could we rewrite the, the natural log of 1 8? And, we, and our goal here, if we could, we'd like to be able to write it in terms of a 2, right? The log 2, so we could just cancel the 2 to the, two to the uh, two close to the negative. No. Oh, no, you're right. Sorry, negative 1 third. Sorry. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, that was my mistake. So we could write this, and let's take that in steps. We could write that as the natural log. Well, let's do that's good. Enough. So one eighth is just two to the negative one. Negative three. Oh, ne not negative one third. You're right. It was, it's negative three, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Right. Now, how come? What's the negative do? The negative pops it to the bottom, and then eight is two cubed. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe the way to do that. Maybe if I wanted to include an intermediate step, here's what I was kind of hope, I was starting to think about, but I never really finished my thought. I could write this as the natural log of one over two cubed, right? Does that help? Because the eight is a two cubed over the natural log of two, and then if I have an exponent on the bottom, that's the same thing as a negative exponent on the top, right? Remember, that's all the negative exponent rule means for exponents is. A positive expo a negative exponent on the top becomes a positive exponent on the bottom, being the denominator, and a negative exponent on the bottom becomes a positive exponent on the top, right? So this then looks like natural log of two to the minus yeah. two to the minus three over natural log of two. And now what's my Evan, what's my exponent property there? What am I gonna do with that negative three? Put it to the front. Negative 3 log 2 over log 2, and I just get negative 3, right? Okay. Okay. The shortcut, you know, I mean, that, that's probably the best way algebraically to do it. The shortcut, when you still, well, after you've done a few of these, you'll just start thinking in terms of logs. Really, I mean, you're just thinking, okay, 2 to what power equals 1 8 is the answer, isn't it? That's really what, what a base 2 log is saying. 2 to what power equals 1 8? Well, it's negative 3, isn't it? Questions? Okay. So, what about solving logarithmic equations then? So what can we do here? There's a bunch of options. 27 to the x. There you go. That's one thing we could do. 27 to the x equals one third, and we can solve it that way. 
And if we do that, that's fine. So, so method one. Twenty-seven to the x equals one third. So what would x have to be? Twenty-seven to what power is three? How is it? one one third? Right. I'm doing yeah. cube root of twenty-seven is three. So then, if it's on the bottom, it must be a negative three, right? Or a, a negative one. Sorry. Twenty-seven to what power is three? You told me one third. One third. Oh, that's it. One third. Huh. Oh, sorry, negative one third. I'm getting this all sorted out, right? Because I get uh, right. So the it's it's a twenty set here. Let me write that down. Again. I'm probably confusing heck out of here. So twenty seven to the one third equals three, right? Agreed. So this isn't a this isn't a three though. It's a one over three. So it's got to be a negative one third, doesn't it? Right. So then, twenty-seven to the negative one third would equal one over three, and so the answer is x equals negative one third. Right. Okay, that works. What else? What if we want to do this? We don't want to think that hard. We just want to do this algebraically. How do we undo a logarithm? Right. What's our? What's the inverse function? Of a, of a logarithm, exponential, right? And if this is a base 27 logarithm, what's the exponential function that's going to undo a base 27 logarithm? Right? If it's a, now think about that. If we've got, let's go back for a second, I have a little page here. So, if I want to undo, for example, the natural log of x equals 4, right? How do I undo a base e logarithm? What would we say we did to that? What's our step, our algebra step? We're going to do base e exponential, right, at both sides, because base e exponentials undo base e logs. Those are inverses. So they undo each other. So my step would be I could do e to the log x equals e to the 4. And the whole point of that is those guys cancel, right? So I get x equals e to the 4, whatever that is, some number, right? How would I undo a base 10 logarithm? If I have a common log, a common log of x equals 10,000, well that implies, if I just write log, it means base 10, right? Mm -hmm. So what do I do to both sides there? Somebody help me out here. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Raise the power of what? How do I undo a base 10 log? i got to do base 10 exponential of that log. Okay, so I'm going to do 10 to the power of, whoops. base 10 log of x, and that cancels itself, right? And then over here I get uh, 10 to the, that's the number I want to do, wasn't I? Do 10 to the 10,000, that's a big number of bucks. Yeah, so I end up with x equals 10 to the 10,000, which is a pretty big number. Is that kind of counterproductive? Because can you just spend 10 to 10,000 equals x, like instead of doing that? You're right. Yeah, you can. You can. Right. You can also think about that as a, right. I, I get that. In this particular application, it is. But I, what I'm just trying to review is what what's the rule there? How do you undo a, a, a logarithm? And, and you're right. I mean, this is one where you could. But I'm going to give you some problems here in a second where you can't do that. Right. So we want to be thinking in terms of how can I undo a logarithm? Right, so if it's a base 10 log, I undo it by now. What if it's a base? So what I'm getting at here is our, our kind of our general rule. If I've got a base A logarithm that I want to undo, so I've got the base A log of x equals y. We'll just make it totally general. How do I undo the base A logarithm? Base A exponential of both sides. Right, so we'll write that as 
a to the base a log of x equals a to the y. And the whole point is that's what cancels the base a log. And so I get x equals a to the y. You already knew that from your, you know, if we want to rewrite this as an exponential statement, you told me that earlier. That's the same thing as saying a to the y equals x. But I want you to see how to get there with that step, that you can exponentiate both sides to undo the log, right? So now, what could I do here? Right? I could exponentiate both sides, do a base A exponential, of, or a base 27 exponential of both sides. And we get 27 to the base 27 log of 1 third equals 27 to the x. So those guys cancel. And we get 1 third equals 27 to the x, right? Oh, what the heck? Why am I doing that? <laughs> yeah, that's never mind. I see what you, I mean. I don't know why I was doing that. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking of the next problem. So, what are we going to do here? This is just more of the same stuff we were doing. If I want to solve for x, what am I going to do? Natural log of one third of natural log of one third. It's already solved for x. I, I'm, I'm thinking ahead. The problem's like that. Right? There, we're going to have to do something. But right here, all we got to do is just rewrite this as a, a ratio of logs. So natural log one third over natural log twenty-seven equals x. Now pause and think about that for a second. Right? How can I simplify that? Bottom up could be three or two. Okay, good. So we we, we want to find a common base of the logs that where we can cancel the logs. It's going to be three, isn't it? Right. The 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 bottom one is going to end up being natural log of 3 cubed, because 27 is 3 cubed. What about the top one? 3 to the negative 1, the negative one right? And that's useful, because now I can just pop those exponents down front, and I get negative log 3 over 3 log 3. And when I cancel those, that's just negative one third. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Okay, last one. What about something like that? A couple ways we can do this. Can you get any ideas? Something might try here. Okay, we, we could exponentiate both sides. Okay, so let's just let's try that. See what happens. So if we do that, so if we take both sides to the base four, we're going to get four to the base four log of x. Now that's good on that side, right? That's just going to become an x. What about over here? If I've got four to the one minus base four log of x plus three. What's our rule of exponents? If I have something like a to the m plus n, what's that equal to? <clears throat> a to the three. Yeah, that's what but how do I, I'm just reversing a real simple property here. Like what, how do I, how, what do I do to get, what, what would I start off with to get a to the m plus n? When I take a power to a power, I multiply the exponents, right? But if I multiply like bases, I'm adding the exponents. So this would have to be equivalent to multiplying a to the m. So we got like bases, a to the m times a to the n, right? Remember that one? Okay, so then we could write this as 4 to the 1 times 4 to the base 4 log of x plus 3. Okay, that's, that's kind of good because what is this doing over here? 
cancels those guys, doesn't it, right? So I get x equals 4 times the quantity x plus 3, right? And now that's easy to solve. Yes, sir? Would the negative, did you just get rid of Oh, that, no, sir, that should be a negative, shouldn't it? That's supposed to be a negative. So, so now, if it's a negative, what does that mean? Sorry, I forgot the negative up there. Oh. Right. The negative x plus 3 is raised. Just, it just goes to the bottom. So really, the one that we wanted, I, I, I omitted that. But look, what, what if we, you tell me, how is this going to be different if I have a to the m minus n? What's that going to be? a to the m divided by a to the n. Right? Is that our rule? Yeah. Maybe we get... When we when we multi, when we divide like bases, we subtract the exponents. So what should I have done here? I should have really put. Go back and fix that. I should have put this on the bottom. Jeez. Right. We should have had this written as uh, four to the one divided by that, which is x plus 3. Make sense? Okay, and now I can just cross multiply and solve that, right? Okay, so that works. That's a good idea. Job, Ashley. That was a good one. Uh, what else could I do with this? Uh, you probably hate when math teachers do this, but this is really important to see how you can, you can look at this in different ways and how they're all compatible. The other thing I could do is I could I could push all the, the logs to one side, right, and use my properties of logs to simplify this before I change things. So we'll, we'll, let's, let's do that, just to see how it's different. So what if I add the log to this side? I get a base 4 log of x plus a base 4 log of x plus 3 equals 1. Okay, well, let's reverse our properties of logs. How do I compress that? Right. I mean, like we did this with, with natural logs earlier. We said the natural log of A plus B equals <coughs> log A plus log B, right? So the log of a sum equals, or the log of a, sorry, of a product. And that's just a product. Uh, that's it. Does that make sense? Right? Equals the sum of the logs. So let's reverse that. It doesn't have to be base C. It could be base 4. This is supposed to be a 4. Right? We could just reverse that. If we have a sum of logs with the like base, we could write that as a product, a single product of that base. Right? So I could compress these into the base 4 log of that times that, right? X times X plus 3. And if that equals 1, well then, what am I going to do? Right now I can undo that however you want to. I could, I could rewrite this as an exponential. 4 to the 1 equals that. Or I could do a base 4 exponential of both sides. Take your pick. Either way, I'm going to get x times x plus 3 equals 4 to the 1 equals 4. Same thing we get there, isn't it? If I cross multiply. Doesn't make any difference. We're just going to get a quadratic equation. Now let's let's finish the, the problem here. Because there's one other thing that's going to come out of this that's going to be important. Okay. And just maybe to have all the bases covered. I could have even the road forked there. And if I did this, because we talked about it. If I exponentiate both sides, right? Everybody sees that that just cancels the log. And I get that result either way, right? Okay, so if we finish this, how would we solve this equation? To distribute the x. Okay, good. Set equal to zero. So we'll expand it, put it in standard form, set it equal to zero. I'm going to get x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals zero, right? That factors easily. So what are the factors? Okay, so that's going to give us the solutions. X equals Okay, now, don't say anything out loud. I want you guys to think about this for a second. You like those solutions? Or our original equation?
Because that's what the math gods gave us, but you gotta be careful. We're dealing with laws. Joseph, you like those solutions? Ah, good, right? What's the domain of a log function? Domain of a log function is only positive numbers, right? Think what the graph of a log function looks like. It's asymptotic on the negative y-axis, and then it cuts through the x-axis at, at 1. And it, does that make sense? But it's not defined for, for anything but positive numbers. And so we have to discard that solution, don't we? Because it's not in the domain of, of either one of those functions, right? It's not in the domain of log x, but it's not even in the domain of, of the log of x plus 3, right? If I plug in negative 4, I'm going to be I'm going to try to take a log of negative 4. Here, I'd be trying to take the log of negative 1. Neither one is allowed, okay? Make sense? Okay. So moral of that story is whenever you solve a log equation, you always got to go back and ask yourself, okay, that's what I get mathematically, but does that solution even exist in the context of the functions, right? Is it in the domain, okay? Make sense? That was really quick. I was, I was trying to just the hall there to get you working on stuff, but is that, I hope I didn't go too fast. Is that kind of ringing some bells and yep. bringing, bringing you back to what you did? It probably took a lot longer to do that in pre-calc and it was just a review, but hopefully that helps a little bit, okay? This assignment, it just, it's just kind of trying to get you thinking in terms of logs again. So have at it.